Residents and friends, again, it's very good to be here for our first rally for Marsling UT. We are going to have another one next week at Woodland Stadium. Tonight, as I said just now, we are Tompang from Chua Chu Kang because UT came from Chua Chu Kang, so we are here with our friends from Chua Chu Kang and also our friends from UT. UT is no longer part of Chua Chu Kang. We are now in a new GRC, Marsling UT. I know some of you say, why do boundaries keep changing? I also ask the same question. But let me just say, the boundaries may change, the candidates may change, but the PAP remains the same. We have always been here, and we will always be the party on your side, working with you, for you, and for Singapore. I've just moved from West Coast Boon Lay to Marsling UT just a few weeks ago. I spent a lot of time these few weeks walking the ground, meeting with residents, getting to know the area better. One thing I know, the food in Marsling UT is very good. I think the hawker food is perhaps the best in the whole of Singapore. Sorry to say for those of you who are from Chua Chu Kang. I've also been getting to know the residents better, and I want to thank all of you for your very warm welcome. Thank you for receiving me as part of your family and welcoming me with such warm hospitality. I've met many of you, I've listened to your stories. Uh, quite a number of you moved to UT 20 years ago when the town was first developed. This was your first HDB home. One lady shared with me that she could see the dramatic improvements over the years. The MRT station was built in 1996 and progressively new developments started coming on and you could see the environment changing. And she also says she likes the greenery, the park connectors and the strong kampong spirit in UT. So there are many things that we can be proud of in UT. I've also heard your concerns and your feedback and I want to assure all of you that the points that you have raised to me and my team will be included in our agenda for action over the next five years if you give us the chance to serve you. Transport will be one of our key priorities. That's why Alex took such a long time explaining transport. As you heard just now, we will be improving the connectivity and bus services in UT. And when the downtown line is ready end of the year, you will have a shuttle service to Bukit Panjang Downtown Line Station from UT. And in the longer term, we will appeal to LTA to consider extending the downtown, downtown line even further northwards so that there will be easier access for UT residents to the downtown line. We will also enhance the greenery and the park connector network in UT. I've met many residents who are cyclists, joggers. They love the green, they love the parks, they love the park connectors in UT. We will make it better. We will ride on the rail corridor and we will improve the park connector so that you can even cycle and jog from UT all the way up to Marsling, all the way up to the Woodlands Northern Coast. And we will enhance our community facilities through neighbourhood upgrading programmes. We will enhance our covered walkways, our facilities. We will enhance the sports facilities in our community. And speaking as a sports minister with a lot of interest in this area, I want to assure you that we will make the sports facilities in UT even better. We will enhance the facilities in Chua Chu Kang Stadium and we will have more sports facilities all over our neighbourhood to, make our, to allow our residents to stay active and healthy. I've also met many parents who are residents who are parents. They are working very hard so that their children can have a better future. They are worried about their children's future. They want to ensure that their children have a good education. And more importantly, they want their children to have the opportunities to make good in life. And, and your experiences, listening to your stories, working hard for your children, remind me of my own life story. 
I, rem I remember my parents got their first HDB flat many years ago in Marine Parade in the early 70s. At that time, it cost them a princely sum of $30,000. HDB flat, $30,000. Some of you say so cheap. You know, but you know, at that time, my mom only earned $400 a month. $400 a month as a teacher. And my dad's income was not very stable. So the whole family, about four or $500. And out of that monthly income, they had to pay a mortgage of $300 in cash. So it's not that easy if you think about it. $30,000 may so seem like a small amount of money compared to today's price, but practically all of their monthly income had to go into paying the home mortgage. So my parents screamed and saved every dollar to make ends meet. And then when I was growing up as a child, I remember how they would tightly manage the household finances. Uh, we didn't go for overseas holidays, but we would spend time at the East Coast Beach because that's just next door. We didn't go shopping, but my mom would sew clothes on her own so that we could wear. It's not so expensive and it's homemade. Uh, we didn't eat out very much. My mom would go to the market, she would, buy she would buy fresh food and she would cook the dishes at home. And I still remember her saying she would choose the cheapest vegetable. So it would be nengkak for eng chai and nengkak for heng chai. <laughs> now eng chai and heng chai, nengkak may be, be sai bui yao, uh. I don't know why it's a price now, but definitely 20 cents, you can't get very much. Uh. And also, nengkak for eng chai, nengkak heng chai, the cheapest vegetables she could find, and then she would cook for us. That's why, even though I actually don't like eating vegetables very much, but even till today, I like eating spinach and kangkong because I ate it from young. So you see, life wasn't easy when I was growing up. It was not just at home, but it was also in school. I had difficulty adjusting to my school environment when I was young. I kept crying in class. The teacher was very concerned, so she called my mom up and said, Mrs. Wong, I think your son is going to have a bit of a problem. This boy of yours doesn't seem to be very interested in studying. I think you have to be prepared that he may not do well in school. And because they thought that, you know, this guy may not be such a good student. But my teachers and my parents never gave up on me. From young, they instilled in me the value of hard work, of resilience. And I learned at a very early age to be diligent, to be conscientious in whatever I do. And as I started working hard, paying attention, somehow things started to click, and then I got better at my studies. Eventually, I did well enough to get a scholarship and then to pursue my university studies overseas. So I have always been very conscious that I have benefited from many opportunities in Singapore. Opportunities made possible by the PAP government. Opportunities that would not have been possible if I were born in a different country. And, and you know, my story is not unique. It's not just me. Many Singaporeans, young and old, have similar experiences. I look at my classmates, the people who grew up with me when I was in school. Very similar stories. We took different paths. Some went to the private sector. Some went into volunteer work. Some went to non-profit sectors. Some went into public service like me. But all of us have had opportunities to improve our lives fulfill our dreams, and achieve our potential. Now, in an election, it's natural for opposition parties to focus on things that are not going so well, and then they will use that to stir and to get people excited and all upset. And certainly, not everything is perfect here in Singapore. In fact, I think if you are looking for perfection, you probably can't find per perfection this side of eternity. You know, I've, but I've learned from young to count my blessings in life. And I'm certainly grateful that in Singapore, we are a society where every child has a decent shot at life. We are a society where the doors of opportunity are open to all, whether you are Malay, Chinese, Indian, Eurasian, any race or religion. We are a society where everyone, anyone can make it if you are prepared to work hard and persevere you can make good, and you can achieve your potential.
The PAP wants to keep this Singapore dream alive. We want to make Singapore and keep Singapore a nation of opportunity for every Singaporean. And we are doing everything we can to achieve this and to sustain this dream of having a nation of opportunity here in Singapore. In education, we are continuing to improve our system. We are investing in preschool education now so that regardless of your background in life, your child can be assured of a good start in life, even at preschool. At the school system, we are improving the system, putting in resources to every school so that they can level up, so that you don't have to be stressed out about going to the right school. And anyway, I didn't go to a top school in Singapore. It doesn't matter. You can go to any school in the neighborhood and you can make it. You can achieve success in Singapore. And we are providing many more pathways for people with different abilities and talents, whether it's through SOTA, the School of the Arts, or the sports school. And we are expanding post-secondary opportunities with a fifth and sixth university, expanding university places for Singaporeans, and enhancing our polytechnic and ITE programs. So we are doing that preschool, school, post-secondary, and we are also doing that for jobs so that when your children graduate, they can be assured of good jobs here in Singapore. We are strengthening the Singaporean core in our workforce, and we are working sector by sector to make sure that in every industry, there are good career progression pathways for Singaporeans, so that Singaporeans can continually get upgraded through skills future and can progress in every sector, in every industry. On top of that, we are also strengthening our social safety nets to provide better assurance for everyone. So in Singapore, we, it's not just a society where you're left to fend for yourself. We will help you if you fall behind. And that's why we have MediShield Life, we have CPF Life, we have Workfare and Silver Support. All so many different schemes to provide support and assurance for every Singaporean. In fact, if you think about it, we have schemes to take you through every phase of your life, from birth all the way to the end of your life. So if you think about it, you know, in this election, there are many political parties, but the PAP is the only party that can be your partner for life. We've walked this journey with Singaporeans since 1959, for 60 years, even before independence. The opposition part parties like to say, don't dwell on the past. The PAP talks only about its past. But we are proud of our past. We are proud of the fact that we are the party of our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. We are proud of our track record that we have worked with Singaporeans for 60 years to build our nation together. And the past provides a guide to our present and to the future. So we embrace the past because the past provides a guide so that we can chart ahead for the future. And if you look to the future, it is not, I mean, there are uncertainties ahead, there are challenges ahead. It's not clear that the next 50 years for Singapore will be just smooth sailing. We have reached a high point in our development and the next 50 years will be much more difficult. It's like climbing a mountain. At first, at the base level, it's quite easy to climb. As you get higher, the air gets thinner, you get more tired, the slope is steeper, and you've got to work that much more harder. So we will face challenges. There will be regional volatilities. You already see it around us in the region, our neighbours, the situation is uncertain. There will be security threats with terrorism, with ISIS. There will be challenges to our economic environment because other nations are coming up and emerging and they are also wanting to keep up. In fact, the real competition is not competition within Singapore. The real competition is between us, our little red dot, and the great big world around us.
Others are catching up and they are wanting to eat our lunch too. No, so I remember the song. Some years back, we had a National Day song. And there was a line in that song that said, there was a time when Singapore, when people said Singapore wouldn't make it, but we did. I don't know if you remember that song. We are Singapore. There was a time when people said Singapore wouldn't make it, but we did. That was 50 years ago. People said we wouldn't make it, but we proved them wrong. By working together as one team, we built our nation for 50 years. Now we are at a new phase. And the critics and skeptics are saying the same thing again. They are saying we can't make it. We've had a good run for 50 years. Can Singapore continue for the next 50 years? So let's prove the critics wrong. Let's make it together. You know, when you are in a tough competition, when you are facing tough odds, you choose your best possible team and then you give them your full support. You don't start to divide amongst yourselves. You unite together, you choose your best team, you unite together and you face the competition together. That's what we did in the SEA Games recently. How many of you saw the SEA Games in June? We selected our best athletes, we gave them our full support and we rallied together as one Team Singapore and we got our best ever performance at the SEA Games. 84 gold medals and the most number of medals amongst all the countries. That's what we did together as one Team Singapore. So I hope in this election, Singaporeans will vote also for the best team, the best team to provide governance, good governance, good leadership for our community and for our nation. We in the PAP offer you our track record for scrutiny, we offer to you our plans for the future and we offer to you our service for the people. And I hope all of you will choose us to be your representative. We promise to work with you, for you and for Singapore. Thank you very much. Majula Singapore! Thank you, Mr. Wong. Next, we have former Chuan Chukang RCMP, Mr. Alvin Yeo. Let's welcome Mr. Yeo.